So I've been getting a few comments recently asking where has the Capri got to and why no videos of late. Well the truth is uh, the combination of this Covid-19 lockdown period and the fact that I'm in the middle of moving house or trying to move house uh, I just haven't had that much time for the Capri. It's sad but it's true, I'm sorry uh, but I'm here to correct that right now because in this month's Tech Tip video we're going to delve inside of the Capri's distributor and have a look at how to adjust your mechanical advance to suit the tune of your engine. Okay, before we get started on this video, I'm assuming that you're all familiar with how to set ignition timing. Uh, if you're not, I suggest you backtrack to one of my earlier Tech Tip videos. It's number four, I think, uh, where I go over this, as this video is going to build on those principles. Right, so you've set your ignition timing at six, eight, ten degrees before top dead centre, whatever it requires. Well, what you've set there is often referred to as your initial timing. And it's called initial timing because there's two other mechanisms mechanisms inside your distributor that can control your ignition advance based on various running conditions. All right, so the first of these is vacuum advance. So that's this canister looking thing on the side of the distributor here. Now this basically acts with inlet vacuum adding ignition advance as vacuum increases. So say for example you're cruising down the motorway at light throttle, the carb butterflies will be barely open so that results in a high vacuum situation. That vacuum acts on a diaphragm inside here which in turn pulls this lever here and advances your timing. This increases the engine's efficiency giving you smoother running and better economy. But I don't want to go too deep into this as it's not really the focus of this video and as you can see mine has been blanked off anyway due to my carb setup but that's what ignition advance is in a nutshell. So the second way in which your distributor adjusts your ignition advance is what's known as mechanical or centrifugal advance and that is what we're going to be looking at today. Now this solely acts on the RPMs of the engine and adds advance as RPMs increase and here's how it does it. So in the bottom of your distributor is a weight and spring setup which spins with the distributor shaft. Uh, as the RPMs increase uh, the shaft spins faster and these weights are forced outwards due to centrifugal force and it's this action that advances your timing. How fast these weights are flung outwards and how far they travel is what gives you your advance curve and it can be adjusted which is what we're going to be looking at today. Okay so both of these mechanisms uh, centrifugal and vacuum add advance to your initial timing. So say you've set your engine to 8 degrees before top dead centre at idle that means that if the mechanical advance is capable of adding another say 30 degrees uh, maximum then at high RPM wide open throttle your spark plug will be firing at 38 degrees before top dead centre so that's 8 degrees of your initial advance plus 30 degrees of mechanical advance. I hope that makes sense. And then the vacuum advance is capable of adding another 10 or 12 degrees uh, maximum. So if you were cruising at high RPM with light throttle, it is possible you could be pushing over 50 degrees of advance, but that's a very unlikely scenario. I just used it as an example. The reality is much more fluid, you know, high gears, low RPMs, high RPMs, low gears, uh, the scenarios constantly change as does your ignition advance based on these situations and using these two mechanical systems. It's quite clever stuff and how Spark was controlled way before computers and programmable ECUs came on the scene. So if you've stuck with me this long, well done because finally we're on to the point of this video. Why then do you want to go inside of your distributor and start dicking about with your mechanical advance? Well if your engine is standard, don't it's fine but as soon as you start modifying an engine for more power for example these standard settings move away from being ideal so things like camshafts compression ratios engine capacity uh, all come into play and the more extreme your tune the more adjustment you will have to make 
Now there's a fantastic article online written by Dave Andrews which I'll put a link to down in the video description. I suggest if you've got time check it out because it goes into all this and more and crucially it will give you a good idea of what your advanced curve should look like given the tune of your engine and it's the exact article I used to calculate the advanced curve of this engine. All right, so using Dave Andrews' article, I've written down what my advanced curve should look like for this engine, given its tune. So basically, uh, I need to remove 10 degrees of mechanical advance. That will allow me to set my initial timing uh, at 18 degrees before top dead center uh, and still have a maximum of 38 degrees at high RPM. So in addition to this, I also need to reduce the RPM at which maximum advance is achieved by about a thousand rpm so from 4500 uh, to 3500 so these two things i'm going to show you how to do right now right so here we are looking down on the distributor of the capri now before you get going if your vacuum advance is connected you need to disconnect it and blank it off at both ends as it could potentially interfere with this job mine has been blanked off for a while so I've got no need to worry about that so now I need to get into the guts of the distributor so I'm going to remove the distributor cap uh, the points the condenser and the rotor arm uh, I'm going to whip through this if you're struggling check out tech tip number 19 pull this plug wire off first cap clips one two lift the cap off Rotor arm, points, condenser. So with those things removed, we've got a clearer view of the base plate of the distributor right here. Now, in order to access the mechanical advance, this needs to be removed. So to get this out, firstly, I need to remove the vacuum advance module. So this is held on by two screws, one here and one here. And then there's a little C-clip that needs removing, which holds the lever to the base plate there. So I'll tackle this little circlip first. This can be a little bit fiddly. There we go. Now all the fasteners I'm going to remove today are extremely small, so put everything somewhere safe. I've got one of those uh, little magnetic trays, so I'm going to put everything in that. So now the C-clip's removed, I can remove the vacuum advance module. So there's two screws, like I said, here and here. You might need a stubby screwdriver to get these. One. I'm going to try not to drop this. Probably will. Okay, the second screw out. Now the vacuum advance can be removed. Like that. Okay, next up are the clips on the side of the distributor. So there's two screws to remove here. One for each clip. That's one. I'm going to cheat with this one. I've got a screwdriver bit and I'm going to get my adjustable spanner on it to get this out. Because it's a little tight there. Okay, it's coming now. Number two. So now we're on to the base plate and in this Bosch distributor it needs to be gently tapped clockwise to release it from these two notches here and then it can be lifted up and out of the distributor. There we go, that's the base plate removed. Right, we're where we need to be now, boys and girls, into the heart of the distributor. And we've exposed the mechanical advance system down here. So three things to note here. First is the weight. So there's two of these here and here. Secondly is the springs, two of these as well, here and here. And then thirdly is the limit stops. There's two of these 
here and here. Now these all combine to give you your advanced curve and can all be adjusted but the ones we're going to focus on today are the springs and the limit stops. So I'm sorry to disappoint you guys but I've already adjusted my distributor a long time ago so I won't be making any adjustment today. But to take away uh, 10 degrees of mechanical advance I've basically bent these lock stops here uh, using a screwdriver to lever them inwards. That limits the travel of the weights therefore limiting your maximum advance. Now I know what you're thinking James how do I know how far to bend these stops? Well, you're not going to like the answer because this job is purely trial and error. You've got to make an adjustment, then put everything back together again, start the car and get the timing good on it. I know it's a pain in the butt. I understand why it puts a lot of people off, but bear in mind this took me, when I did it a few years ago, it took me about three attempts to get right, you know, a couple of hours, something like that. Not too bad, really, and uh, it's free after all. So once I'd made an adjustment to the limit stops here, uh, the next thing I needed to do was reduce the RPM at which maximum advance is reached. Now this is controlled by the springs as these basically resist the action of the weights being thrown outwards due to centrifugal force. So a stronger spring, uh, the more RPM is required to reach maximum advance. Now. I need maximum advance to be reached about 3500 RPM, that's 1000 uh, RPM ish, less than standard. So basically I've installed a softer spring. Now if this were a standard distributor and you look down in here you'd see one soft spring and one hard spring. So I had a spare distributor, I stripped that down, I pinched the soft spring out of there and swapped it for the hard spring in here. So effectively I'm now running two soft springs and this got me pretty much perfect to where I needed to be. If you needed to fine tune it you could always bend a spring post to increase or decrease the spring rate but this wasn't necessary for me. Again this is all trial and error and it's pretty time consuming but you've gone in there, you've had a crack at it, you've made an adjustment, what now? Well put everything back together, fire it up and get the timing light on it. Okay, so assembly is the reverse of how you removed everything. Uh, this base plate can be a little tricky to get in place, but what you need to make sure is that it's resting on this little lip here before you attempt to tap it anti-clockwise into place. Uh, now you'll know when it's in place because you'll be able to install the two screws uh, for the distributed clips. So we'll gently drop it into place. like so. So now it's resting on that lip, I need to tap it anti-clockwise to engage it with these two notches here. There we go. That'll do. So that's both clips installed, now is the vacuum advance. Grab the vacuum advance module and slide it into place. There we go, and install the two screws. One. Two. And then just this little C-clip to go back in. Push it in. Boom. Okay, so now the condenser needs to go back on and the points need to be reinstalled and gapped. Now, if you don't know how to do this or you're struggling, uh, you can check out tech tip number 19 where I go into this in great detail. So, condenser, unscrew, tighten that down. Points are up next. Right, so finally the rotor arm can go back on and then the distributor cap. Like that, oh, and the spark plug lead, don't forget about that. Okay, so everything is back together. We're going to leave the vacuum advance blanked off for now as we don't want it to interfere with things. So we're ready to start the car. Now, what I've done is marked my lower crank pulley in increments of 10 degrees uh, with Tipex to 
I think a maximum of 50 degrees before top dead center and that's going to let me see where my timing is at when the RPMs rise. If you've got one of those fancy timing lights that you can dial ignition advance into, even better. Okay, she's not starting. Well, for those of you with keen eyes, you'll know why. Because I forgot to connect the points to the coil. Dumbass. Right, we should be back in business now. Oh yeah, praise the Lord. Great, so what I'm gonna do now is set my initial advance to around 16, 17, 18 degrees, probably close to 18 degrees, and then we can go about checking our mechanical advance. Okay, so I've set my initial advance to around 18 degrees before top dead center at idle. So now I can go about checking the mechanical advance. So this really is a two-man job, but I think I'm going to get around it by mounting the GoPro up in the engine bay and pointing it at the crankshaft pulley. And then I'm going to sit in here and film the tachometer with my phone and then using these uh, two bits of footage side by side I should be able to get a good idea of what the mechanical advance curve looks like for this engine so let's try it Right, so I have finally got round to reviewing this footage and editing the video and from what I'm seeing here it looks pretty good. Advance is kicking in about 1500 RPM so a couple hundred more than I expected but not a problem and then I'm all in at bang on 3500 RPM which is great. Now if this was your first attempt at an adjustment there's a good chance unless you are really really lucky uh, that you're going to have to go back in there and make another adjustment but I guarantee you this job is going to be quicker second time round. It always is. Uh, and that's all there is to it. Try not to get too hung up on the trial and error aspect of this job and just remember it is a free modification after all and free mods do not come along very often. And on my car it did make a noticeable difference picking up from part throttle so it was well worth it. There you go. I hope distributor advance is slightly less confusing to you all now. If it is and you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to stay up to date with what's going on at Fast Rust, do subscribe to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you for the next video.